going to be five different uh, books that we're reading from. The first one is Genesis 15, 1 through 6, and 21, 1 to 6. So I'll just begin there, and I'll let you know as we go through. Okay, this is the Lord's covenant with Abram. After this, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your very great reward. But Abram said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I am childless? And the one who will inherit my state is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord, and he credited to him as righteousness. Now, Genesis 21, 1 through 6, the birth of Isaac. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At that very time, God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. Now we're going to Psalm 16, 5 through 11. Lord, you alone are my portion and my cup. You make my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. <coughs> Excuse me. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him in my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Now we go to Habakkuk 3. 17 through 19a. <clears throat> Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. Now we go to John 16, verses 16 through 33. The disciples' grief will turn to joy. Jesus went on to say, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me. At this some of the disciples said to one another, What does he mean by saying, In a little while you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? And because I am going to the Father, they kept asking, what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand what he is saying. Jesus saw that they wanted to ask him about this, so he said to them, Are you asking one another what I mean when I say in a little while, you will see me no more, and then after a little while you will see me? Very truly, I tell you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain, because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish, because of her joy that this child is born into the world. So with you, now your time is grief, 
but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered into the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. And Jesus' disciples said, Now you are speaking clearly and without figures of speech. Now we can see that you know all things, and that you do not need to have anyone ask for questions. This makes us believe that you came from God. Do you believe now, Jesus replied. A time is coming, and in fact has come when you will be scattered, each to your own home. You will live you will leave me all alone, yet I am not alone, for I am with my Father, who is with me. I have told you these things, so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Okay, finally we're in 1 Peter, and it's the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can be never perished, spoiled, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you will greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuinenesses of your faith, of greater worth and woe, who perishes even through refined fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. <coughs> though you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe him, and are filled with an expressible and glorious joy, for you are sure you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your soul. We just ask that God bless this readings that we have made, and we just pray that it will be uh, with Pastor Greg now as he brings the word, and that we'll take it out through the week and bless others.
said the risen Savior to his disciples. Joy is something in short supply in our world these days, or so it seems. What is joy, and how can we truly, as Christian people, live in it? Does joy equal happiness? You can answer that question out loud if you want to. Is it the same? It is not the same. We thank, we thank dear old Warren Wiersbe, who wrote the, the uh, little commentary on Philippians, which is a joyful cha uh, chapter, as you know, in Scripture, that um, joy is happiness um, because only it, or joy is better because it, it can only improve on happiness. Happiness depends on circumstances, and we all know about circumstances, because they change all the time, and puts us into a, I don't know what kind of a thing, sometimes when plans get changed around and all kinds of that kind of stuff and so forth, um, happiness depends on circumstances, those are the things that change. Jesus says we will have joy that nothing can be taken away. Wanda told us that this morning. What does this kind of joy depend upon? And again in Psalm 16, verse 11, In your presence, O God, is fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Complete joy. Joy depends on God and His presence. And the scriptures again have been before us. Genesis, Abraham, sadness, he had no heir, only he was a servant, had a servant, had a steward, had a somebody making out his will. God said he would visit Sarah with his presence and the child named Laughter. Those of us who knew a little Hebrews a year ago in school, um, the child's name was Isaac, which in Hebrew is Laughter, it is Yitzhak, and that's the Hebrew word for laughter. Sarah, all who hear my story will rejoice with me, she said. And I dare say they did. God is our inheritance. He is the source of any wisdom we have. God is our security as we're surrounded by the joy of the risen Christ. For in our, in His presence, in His presence is fullness of joy, fullness. The minor prophet Habakkuk has something to say. Circumstances in his life and ministry in those Old Testament days at that time was terrible. And so no wonder God anointed certain of those to us now minor prophets. There were no crops, there was no livestock, there was no income, there was no wealth. Might sound like 2015, a done day or bad day. But we will rejoice in God. Our salvation is in Him. Jesus brought God's presence to earth in a very intimate and personal way, and the joy continued. We know all about these joyous messages. And I realize we haven't exactly jumped from Christmas to beyond Easter, but angels sang a presence, or a message rather, of joy. It wasn't just a, a, they sang a song of happiness. It was the joy that came in the middle of the heavenly sky that night on the hillside outside Bethlehem. Elizabeth said that her baby leapt for joy at hearing Mary's voice. Mary said her spirit rejoiced in God at his presence with her. The shepherds rejoiced at seeing Jesus. And the ancient temple keepers, Simeon and Anna, were filled with joy when they saw the Messiah in person. The joy continued then, it continued on Easter Day, it continues now. Jesus brought joy to many as he walked the earth, healing, freeing all of his things, and bit by bit got his disciples to share his joy with him and with each other. But now in John 16, Jesus disturbs them a bit by speaking of going away, and that will take away their joy, but then they will see him again and will have that continuing joy. We read that they were even more confused. They were saddened, frightened, 
hearing that Jesus was going away, and he explained it, but they, don't, uh, they didn't understand. They were right to attach joy to his presence with them. He brought joy to them. And it wasn't happiness. It was himself in person, and that was a joyful thing. He said they would be without him, but they would be re that he would return to them, and their joy would be full. Back comes Psalm 16, that your right hand is fullness of joy. He left when he died. They were sad and was lost at the lack of his presence. Joy when he arose and was with them. He left and went back to heaven. Sadness and lost kept looking up to the sky. Joy at Pentecost, which we haven't celebrated yet, but we're headed for it very soon. The joy that came at Pentecost with the coming of the Holy Spirit, he promised them that it would change that day. And so, what about all of us, God's people in various places? What about us centuries later? His words are for us as well, all the words. Joy is dependent on his presence with us, but in this world there is much sadness, much pain, much difficulty. Jesus himself tells this truth, but tells us how to live in joyous atmosphere in his presence, in the world. When he ascended, I am with you always, and we're going to celebrate that not very shortly, or very shortly from now. Through his Holy Spirit, as he promised, he confused disciples, his real presence with us makes us all the difference. We can live in that continuing joy and succeed. In this world you will find trouble, but be of good cheer, he said. Be joyful, because I have conquered the world. Continuing joy here on earth, but there is just more. We need to hear Peter's words again. He says it was this way. Thank God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, that in his great mercy we have been born again unto, into a life full of hope through Christ rising again from the dead. You can now hope for a perfect inheritance beyond the reach of change and decay reserved in heaven for you. This means tremendous joy to you, I know, even though you are temporarily harassed by all kinds of trials and temptations, the present you trust him without being able to see him, and even now he brings you a joy that words cannot express, and which has it in the hint of the glories of heaven. Continuing joy, joy now, and fullness of joy to come. Let us live in this joy of God's own presence through his spirit and through all the power of the word. Let us live with the joy of knowing that God's presence is within and around us all the time. Thanks be to God. And now to him, who is able to keep you from falling, to present you before his glory without fault, and with unspeakable joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before time was, now and in all the ages to come. Amen. Let us pray. We do rejoice. We are not seeking any kind of simplified happiness. We are seeking to get the continuing joy that comes only from you and through you and with you just three weeks ago, he sang a lovely old hymn that many, many people love, and it, is, it has come to be one that many of us love and use on Easter because it came from Easter. And we sang those words with gusto and great spirit on Easter Day. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. So we rejoice, O oh God. We rejoice with your mercies, your blessings, your inestimable love in Christ Jesus, Savior, Lord, and King, in whose name we pray and ask it all.